Hey guys, welcome back to Vito's Garage. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. And in this video, we're gonna work on this amazing 2003 Mercedes ML 350. I'm actually really a big fan of these uh, Mercedes SUVs that they made uh, at the end of 90s and uh, to about 2005. So today we have to work on this car. This actually is a really nice truck. Uh, it's been in the family since brand new. Uh, and the problem with this thing is that when you start it, uh, it starts, runs and shuts off. Sometimes it starts and shuts off right away. And uh, yeah, so I need to figure that out. You know, the person brought this thing to me. So hopefully uh, we can go ahead and fix it up and we should be able to, you know, we never give up. You know, we always fix things here in, at Vito's Garage. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and brainstorm and diagnose the problem on this truck so stay tuned anyways let me show you the problem uh, so the problem still persists uh, so when I press gas press the fuel pedal it's gonna shut off you see that literally shuts off but then I, I can try to restart it it's gonna restart so there was no codes in the engine computer there was no codes in the transmission control module but I am currently in the all activity uh, all activity module uh, which is uh, AAM module so and when I read the codes this is what I get. I get the B1040. And if I clear it, there's going to be no cool. I can clear this. But then uh, uh, when I... Uh, but these codes, basically, this code B1040 comes back as soon as I, uh, you know, give it fuel and it shuts off. So if I do that, these codes or this one code is going to actually come back. So, you know, clearing it doesn't really do anything. So I have to focus on this B1040 code. Uh, that's actually my main problem right now what it seems to be like um, and uh, you know I can clear codes like I said I'm gonna show you I'm gonna clear codes all right so then we're gonna we're gonna go back okay there's no codes right but then I'm gonna do the same thing right now I'm gonna make it stall okay it stalls out as soon as I press gas just a little bit it stalls out then okay let me update you on this okay oh no seems like this thing froze oh there you go resume and again same code it's too much voltage running through the system 15.6 do me a favor you see this thing come on this side so i need you to slowly Let open it up it. yeah slowly open it up okay you read it? i gotta read the reading go ahead slowly go oh wow that's a lot of voltage go ahead a little more That might be a problem to overcharge. All right, give it a quick boom. Like, all right, stop. Yep. You see what happens? Is that what it's been going on? It just yep. So up. especially when it warms up, it literally uh, uh, you give it gas and it just starts going crazy, and it starts uh, shutting off. You know what I mean? So that would be his voltage regulator. Yeah. Something is going on with this uh, alternator for sure, causing a bunch of Can problems. Turn the key off? Yeah, turn it off and turn the lights off. Actually, don't need the lights. What the fuck? It doesn't. Stop! 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 It's a little different. It's uh, right here. It doesn't have that famous. Yeah, it's key. a little different. Okay. Yeah, you can take the key out. Is it? You buy a new battery for it? Yeah. So this battery's junk. There was literally zero volts on this battery. So I have to install a new one. So all that overcharge killed it. On that thing. So... It's interesting, huh?
it looks like this pump is running as well but yeah that's a lot of voltage so how the way i kind of figured it out is when i was running it um i would give it some fuel and then my battery light would just kind of flicker here and there so that might be our problem honestly so what i might try to do is uh i might just disconnect the connection really quick from the alternator and just try to maybe run it like that see if it helps anything because that is not good all right guys it's past midnight but here's what i did you see this cable this cable goes to the alternator right there i loosened the nut there was a nut there's a cap and a nut on it and i started the car first okay i started the car and then i took off this cable carefully while the engine was running that is because you have to have this cable connected because there's another cable right there and it goes to the starter so if you disconnect this cable right away from the alternator the starter is not going to crank so you have to have this cable connected uh, first so you have to have it connected and you start the car um, and then you take this cable off carefully and then you wrap it around okay i have it wrapped around the rag because otherwise it's gonna have uh it's gonna be sparking it's a live positive post okay it comes from the battery right now check this out okay since the alternator is disconnected all right the alternator is disconnected i have uh, this this meter by the way kind of sucks but um let me show you the right amount so that's the voltage right there 12.7 okay it's the the, the alternator is obviously not charging because it's, it's disconnected but let me show you on the inside uh, you'll see the battery is off but what's gonna happen okay you see there's a kind of kind of see the battery right there light uh you can see it better when it's dark <laughs> but the battery light is right there it's just i'm using a flashlight okay that's why it's kind of difficult to show but i'll show you in a second but long story short let me give it some fuel and we'll see if it stalls out look at that she stays running i don't have any weird issues before that i would i would rev it up especially what happened with, when the engine gets hot i would rev it up and then i would literally like the the cluster would go on and off and then it was super weird okay um but as of right now everything is good i'm gonna check the codes once again but uh this alternator is junk so i'm gonna have to take care of that thing um uh, but yeah it's pretty crazy it was a bad uh alternator causing all these issues just causing the engine to shut up because of uh over voltage and everything all right so pretty interesting case study all right um but as of right now the engine is good it's running fine. I'll have to put these covers back on because I was doing some testing here. At first I thought maybe the all activity module was bad or something else because that can actually cause some issues too. And I'll have to put the engine cover back on. And this engine itself, it's got 122,000 miles, but uh, it already needs a few uh, gaskets here and there. I can smell oil burning off. That's pretty common in these M112 engines to just uh, leak oil right there and on the other side as well these valve cover gaskets will need to be replaced which is not a big deal you know these are amazing trucks actually i really like these things so much and this uh, particular one was just uh in one family uh all it's all of its time so yeah pretty cool stuff pretty cool uh case study i'm gonna let it run for a little more and then i just need to make sure that it doesn't shut up because it can run or sometimes it would actually start and stall out right away sometimes it would run it would start up and then it would run for a little bit and it would shut off right now most of the time it does that when it's hot uh, so when it's cold it doesn't really do it but when it gets hot the engine just literally like it's it's gonna run but as soon as you press gas give it some throttle or uh, uh, something like that it's just gonna go crazy because the voltage goes over 16 volts of charge and it's not good um that's why the all the modules are going crazy and it's shutting off the the engine uh but yeah other than that 
you know, I everything looks appears to be all right. Might need the uh, engine mounts as well because they're uh, it's just some vibration. But other than that, I mean, this, this thing is really beautiful. It's really nice and taken care of and everything. All right, guys. Just so you guys can see, there's the battery light right there. Okay, it's on. It's because the alternator is disconnected. All right. So I'm gonna shut it off right now, and then uh, tomorrow, some other day, we're gonna replace this alternator, and everything should be back to normal. All right. One more time. The battery is still, or the alternator is still disconnected. So I'm gonna rev it up a couple times. All right, and it's not shutting off anymore. It's not acting up. Another thing I was gonna mention is that when it started acting up, sometimes the, my wipers would come on randomly, on and off. It was super weird. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start working on this right now. I have a socket and a ratchet. We have to loosen this belt first, which is gonna be, there's a, there's a belt tensioner and there's a, a nut on it. It's 17 mil. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn it, which I think should go the other way, I believe. Let's try to go the other way. Like that. There you go. So I'm gonna pull it counterclockwise and this should loosen the belt. And then the main thing, I just, I don't have to remove the whole thing. It's gotta remove the one from the alternator. Bearing doesn't really seem too horrible. And the alternator itself. While I'm at it, I'm gonna check the other pulleys and stuff like that. Obviously, make sure the battery is disconnected. All right. And then we're gonna remove, there's a, a nut right there. Take that off. Should be 13 millimeter nut. One. And the second one right there, so, okay. There's also a connector on the bottom of the alternator. Now we're gonna grab Torx E14 start removing these bolts one top one bottom all right so both upper and lower bolts are out i had to do the lower one from the bottom now i'm just gonna carefully pry this out this alternator very carefully gonna I don't want it to drop. Everything else is disconnected on it, so just gotta wiggle it back and forth. But you gotta, it's gonna come out from the top, so. All right, I'm using a pry bar and stuff like that. This thing is finally out. There you go. It's our old unit, okay. And then tomorrow I'm gonna come back should be getting a new unit tomorrow and once i do get it i'll install a new one this is not good 
So on these newer Mercedes, unfortunately, the voltage regulator is on the inside, so you can't really replace it as easy. Unlike classic Mercedes from 70s, 80s, 90s, where you can actually access the voltage regulator on the back of the alternator. So, but on this one, unfortunately, you can't. So this thing is not good. And I'm just trying to see whether it's original or not. Most likely, most likely it is, you know. 122,000 miles. Yep, definitely. Mercedes start on it. Bosch. So, yeah. Before I install a new one, I'm going to um, lubricate these spots. This one and down. That way I can slide that new piece easily in there without any problems. All right, so it's going to be the plan. All right. Part. Gosh, okay, it appears to be the right one. back new alternator we're about to start this thing just reconnected the negative of the battery and uh, that belt is back on let's go ahead and try to start this thing so good gonna let it run gonna check the voltage make sure the voltage is good let's try to measure it with our Chinese instrument it's good 13.8 so I'll try to zoom in right here okay 13.9 that's perfect before that it used to whether it would not charge or charge or it would also overcharge this thing so that's it should be good to go we're gonna wait for this thing to warm up right now and then we'll go from there at the end we're gonna install the air filter box and everything else all right the car is pretty much warmed up Go ahead, slightly give it a couple of revs with the gas pedal. Alright. One more time. Alright, that's it. The car is all good. Uh, it's not stalling anymore. There's no more weird issues uh, going on right now. I'm just checking a couple more codes. Make sure there's nothing else in the system. Or something that might need to be cleared. And uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah, it has like a, a little bit of a fluctuating idle that's probably because of the dirty throttle body or something like that but that's not a big deal okay, driving this okay that's it no codes present good to go right here okay let me see let me just go to the all activity module really quick just want to check see if that code is still there it might be still there but it's not affecting anything let's see It's present cool all right so we should be good on this okay now uh shut it off really quick i have to reinstall everything uh the air cleaner and also a couple of few more things all right guys everything is back together everything is amazing no issues here the air filter is all back batteries all tightened up all the clamps and everything and now uh, the alternator right here 
and there you go brand new alternator and no problems this fixed all the issues that this car has been having and uh, right now this car is finally back in service after sitting for about three months uh, um, yeah crazy stuff but I'm about to probably go on the test drive or maybe if not today possibly tomorrow but there you guys have it All right, guys, so I'm about to test drive this thing. I have my fog lamps on. That's because two headlight bulbs are actually out on this car. But I really want to test drive it. So we're going to go ahead, pump the brakes. Test drive this baby. Wow, it's been a while, guys. I got to tell you, this truck's been sitting for at least three months now. So we're going to go ahead and drive this around. Wow, feels great, huh? Yeah, the brakes definitely need some exercising. They're rusty. Actually, I'll go that way. Feels so smooth, feels amazing. I'm driving a real Mercedes now. No issues, it's awesome. She's all good, all fixed up. Amazing. I'll just have to install brand new bulbs tomorrow because all the stores are closed now. Yeah, I really wonder how those bulbs just went out. Maybe they were already out before I got the car. I really don't know. Or maybe this alternator was doing some, did some damage to them. beams Right, guys let's wrap this thing up so um the alternator fixed the issue on this car which was a really weird issue okay uh with starting and stalling of the truck especially when it gets hot uh mainly because of the overcharge uh from the alternator so uh, if this doesn't work for you there's things to check you know let's so just, let's just wrap this thing up so you gotta check make sure your battery is charged fully all right and it's good to go make sure your alternator is good uh, and it's not overcharging the battery or anything like that. Um, and then you also have to make sure. So uh, sometimes what can this can cause? This can be caused because of the bad key, or um, that uh, the key is not being recognized. But if you turn the key to the on position and you see the red blinking light right here uh, next to the radio, that means you're you're good. The DAS module is working. The drive authorization system is functioning properly. 
Um, another thing you can do is you can disconnect the mass airflow sensor on your engine and try to start it and see if it keeps running. All right, if that doesn't happen, then it's most likely not the problem with the mass airflow sensor. And obviously a really good thing is to check for codes, you know, scan all the modules, uh, scan the all activity module, which is really important. It's, uh, all activity module, or it's also called a SAM module, okay? Uh, it actually, uh, it's responsible for a lot of things like door locks, uh, lights, and things like that. So it's really important to check that uh, for codes. Also check the engine control module for codes and things like that. Ch look for something that will give you a direction, okay? Uh, also another thing uh, that would be a good idea to do is check the fuel pressure, okay? Make sure the fuel pressure is uh, good. It's pretty easy on the M112s and M113s. You just literally remove the uh, plastic engine cover and then you uh, there's a Schrader valve on the fuel rail. You can take that off and you can just press on that valve core itself and see if the fuel squirts out. If it, squ if it squirts out, that means you're good. The fuel pressure is okay uh, on this thing. Um, yeah, so there's just a couple of things here and there. It could also be a crankshaft position sensor, you know, causing an intermittent stall issue or just a, a weird problem where it doesn't start anymore. But in this case, it was an alternator. It was a problem with, the, with an alternator. So anyways, guys, I hope this video helps you out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment down below. And I have a lot more videos on my channel, so be sure to check them out. Check out my playlists and everything. I post new content every week. Stay tuned and take care. Bye-bye.